Samarkand. This ancient city in East Central Uzbekistan was at the heart of the trade road known as the Silk Road, linking East and West, a pathway for goods and ideas. Here, modern-day leaders of the East have gathered at the Shanghai Cooperation Organization 2022. The nations here represent 40% of the world's population and more than 30% of its GDP, underlining the importance of this geopolitical alliance. I'm Rasul Serdar in Samarkand. This year, the Islamic Republic of Iran has signed a memorandum of commitments to become a permanent member of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. After several rounds of failed talks in Vienna on the Iranian nuclear program, and the economic sanctions imposed by the West. What are the opportunities ahead for Iran? Find out more as the President of the Islamic Republic of Iran, Ibrahim Raisi, talks to Al Jazeera. President of the Islamic Republic of Iran, Sayyid Ibrahim Raisi, thank you for talking to Al Jazeera. Mr. President, there is a wide range of topics I would like to discuss with you, from the nuclear negotiations in Vienna to the American sanctions on your country. But as we are here in Samarkand for the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit, and it seems all is set for Iran to become a permanent member of this organization, what does this membership mean for your country? صلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وآله الطاهرين السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين Membership of the Islamic Republic of Iran سازمان شانگهای In the Shanghai Cooperation Organization زمینه ارتباط جمهوری Creates the base of promotion of us bilateral relations and infrastructure with the Central Asian countries. We attach great importance for our regional cooperation. The policy of the Islamic Republic of Iran is to establish connections and relations with other countries. We attach great importance to this issue. Shanghai Cooperation Organization can promote cooperation between its member states regarding the regional issues. Up to now, we had the observer status in this organization, and today everything is ready for the full membership of the Islamic Republic of Iran in this organization, and there is the full consensus of the member states uh, for the membership of the Islamic Republic of Iran. And this will impact the promotion of bilateral relations in the region. And it can pave the ground for the expansion and development in the region. There are some capacities in the Islamic Republic of Iran, there are some regional capacities, and exchanging these capacities can uh, affect us a, a lot for cultural, economic growth, and connections in the region. Mr. President, after several rounds of negotiations in Vienna and many reports claiming the unsolved technicalities, how close are Iran and the Western parties involved uh, to the talks uh, to reaching a, a, an, an agreement uh, on your nuclear program? Nuclear discussions in Vienna, which started before my administration, we continued the previously started negotiations in the new administration as well. So in Vienna, we were discussing the removal removal of cru cruel and unfair sanctions against the Islamic Republic of Iran. In this agreement and deal, the Islamic Republic of Iran committed all promises and commitments and fulfilled its commitments. And according to the reports issued by the International Atomic Energy Agency, 
اعلام کرده که جمهوری اسلامی ایران به تحقیق For 15 times they have verified the Islamic Republic of Iran has fulfilled its obligation and its nuclear activities are for, po- for peaceful purposes As قرارداد خارج شد But the side who withdrew from the deal was the United States and those who failed to uh, realize the commitments were the European size in Vienna we were looking to remove the sanctions and still this is on our agenda to remove the sanctions but the Islamic Republic of Iran stresses and emphasizes to remove the sanctions and it should be accompanied by by some guarantees. The reason for asking for guarantees is that the other sides have breached their commitments. And those who are violators of their commitments, they need to build confidence again. And they are not moving against their promises. So we believe that it is necessary to have the guarantees. Removal of sanctions should be accompanied with the resolution of safeguards. If we are supposed to, there are some uh, political and baseless accusations against the Islamic Republic of Iran uh, when it comes to safeguard issues. So this agreement will not be fruitful. And following a few days after the signing the agreement, like the resolution uh, proposed to the Board of Governors at the IAEA, the same thing will happen. And based on their influence, so they will create problems again. So we should finalize the safeguard issues. And regarding the guarantees, if we have the trustworthy guarantees and we have the lasting removal of the sanctions, not temporary uh, removal of sanctions, and if there is a lasting solution for the safeguard issues, for sure it is possible to reach agreement. At the current time, the U.S. side should take the decision. They breach their commitments. They withdraw from the agreement. And now it is the United States that should take the decision to remain committed to its obligations. While the deliberations are still ongoing, what are the top issues that prevented you and the USA from reaching a new realistic agreement? Uh, the impediments are the breach of the uh, violation of the uh, commitments by the U.S. side. The U.S. side should fulfill its commitments. We have expressed our position. We are still present at the negotiation table. We have never left it. We have announced repeatedly that we are ready to finalize a good and lasting agreement. So the United States should take the decision. So this is the problem for the Americans, and this is a problem that they should decide what they are going to do. They have breached their commitments, and at the same time, they are not taking the necessary decisions. So today, we are not dealing with the Iranian side, uh, not uh, taking the necessary decisions, but the U.S. side should take the decision. We have proved that Although sanctions have created problems, and it is very true for all countries who are subject to sanctions, sanctions can never stop us, and they have never stopped us. We have developed country, we have already developed and will continue development in the country, and development of our country will never be stopped because our people are very strong and determined, and they are capable of tearing uh, threats into opportunities, and we have proved it in different sectors. Now, nowadays, the nuclear industry in the country is a localized industry. Our scientists, of course, they are threatened by the Zionist regime, and the number of our dear nuclear scientists 
have been assassinated by the elements of the Zionist regime, but at the same time, we have never been stopped from realizing nuclear achievements. Because first of all, we believe that it is our right to develop our nuclear industry, and the second, second time when it comes to industries, agriculture, medical issues, uh, petrochemicals, oil and gas, uh, there are a lot of benefits of uh, uh, nuclear industry. When it comes to electricity generation uh, or other sectors, there are a lot of benefits to be made out of the nuclear industry. So our country is capable today. This knowledge is not given or transferred from the Western country, but the Iranian uh, people have realized this in this in the country. We believe that they should go to countries like the Zionist regime who have destructive weapons, weapons, weapons of mass destruction. So they should go and prevent those countries from producing this uh, weapons. This shows that they are afraid of the power of the Islamic Republic of Iran. And we are determined to defend the rise of the uh, Islamic Republic of Iran and its people very strongly. What kind of guarantees from the West are acceptable for you moving forward? The guarantees expressed by the Western, con uh, Western side should be trustworthy for Iran. The Islamic Republic of Iran has the right to request for guarantees. Because we are facing a country who have failed their commitments in the past. The United States failed in committing its obligations in the past. And they have acknowledged this fact. When they agree that they have breached their commitments, so it is very natural to say that in order to may utilize this nuclear industry and in order to a trust in this deal and agreement, so we need to receive some trustworthy guarantees. Mr. President, does Iran feel that it is useful at this stage to meet face-to-face uh, -face with the American officials to end the political deadlock and push the nuclear negotiations forward? So we have the experience of one, uh, one round of direct negotiations with the United States. He, so, when it comes to nuclear discussions, we uh, we have the experience of direct negotiations. We believe that there are no benefits of direct negotiations. They are asking for more uh, concessions from the Iranian side. We believe that there are no benefits out of the direct negotiations with the U.S. side. And we believe that the interest of the Iranian nation does not lay in the direct negotiations. Uh, why the United States does not fulfill its, its obligations regarding this agreement? If they want to have the trust of the Islamic Republic of Iran, they need to fulfill their obligations. It is necessary to, to take some trust-building actions for the Iranian side. If they take some trust-building measures, including the lifting of the cruel sanctions imposed against the Islamic Republic of Iran, so Iran and the Iranian nation will understand that the U.S. side is uh, very honest in his actions. And at the same time, while we are doing the negotiations, they are imposing new sanctions against individuals. At the middle of the negotiations, they have the proposal to, to the uh, IAEA Board of Governors to impose sanctions against the Islamic Republic. Does it show the goodwill of the U.S. side? These are some sim uh, symptoms which show that the U.S. side will remain committed to its obligations. My question from the U.S. side is that if you intend for the finalization of the deal, why do you impose sanctions against some individuals just at the midst of the nuclear discussions? Mr. President, for more than 40 years, the Iran 
uh, USA relations have remained hostile. So what has prevented uh, a normalized relations with the USA and how realistic is a diplomatic breakthrough in the near future? has some causes. And there are some statements as well. We have uh, told the world that we do not oppress other countries and we do not accept oppression. And we do not allow any country to dominate. The United States is to looking to dominate Iran like before the victory of the Islamic Revolution. We and our dear people will never let the United States to dominate Iran. They, in different methods and different manners, they want to continue and resume their domination in the country. And they started the hostility. For eight years, Saddam and Ba'ath Party of Iraq was provocated and they supported him financially, from the intelligence perspective, and logistically against the Islamic Republic of Iran. They created a lot of casualties in, in Iran, at the same time in Iraq. So they were looking at uh, coup, 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 uh, coup d'etat in Iran. They supported the MKO activities who are the ISIS that exists today, the ISIS that we see today, they are taking the same measures that MKO members used at the beginning of the Islamic Revolution. They assassinated 17,000 people in the country. They killed the Iranian president. They assassinated the president. They assassinated the prime minister. They assassinated and martyred the head of judiciary. And the Americans and the European countries denounced them as terrorist groups and they blacklisted them. But today, MKO is enjoying their uh, support. Our question is, you listed MKO as a terrorist group and you officially announced that this is a terrorist group who have killed a lot of people and you can see the blood of the Iranian people on their hands. They assassinated 17,000 Iranian women, children, men. These are the hostilities adopted against the Iranian people. They shot down the Iranian civil aircraft, passenger aircraft, and took a great number of measures against my country, which would be a very long list. You see the extent of hostility against my country, against the Islamic Republic of Iran. What was the reason? Because they intended to stop the Islamic Republic of Iran. Have they been succeeded? Uh, by imposing pressures through imposition of sanctions, have they been successful in stopping the Iranian people? I want to quote the sentence of the United Nations spokesperson, maybe you, as an active media member or other medias, would hear this sentence. They officially announced that the maximum pressure against the Islamic Republic of Iran has failed very ridiculously. This is not our statement. This is this statement is made by the spokesperson uh, of the United States. It is made by the uh, State Department by the United States. So they are trying a failed measure. Why are you imposing sanctions again? The hostilities administered by the U.S. United States against the Islamic Republic of Iran cannot be tolerated. We have not been stopped and we will not be stopped. You see that there are different demonstrations held in the country. You see that they have ran higher different media who are working around the clock against the Islamic Republic of Iran to create disappointment among the Iranian people. But you see that how the Iranian people have disappointed the United States and these uh, U.S. mercenary medias. 
The path of hostility, if it's going to be continued by the United States, they should know that up to now they have not been successful, and in future they will not be successful as well. And I believe that اگر دولتی میخواد در امریکا if an administration is going to review its behavior it should put aside the behavior of the previous administrations if an administration uh, claims that it rejects the behavior of the previous uh, administrations so we should see it in practice the Iranian people, the world should see this uh, shift but if the same behavior is uh, resumed, so the Iranian people would have the right to announce that we do not trust the U.S. side. We have told that we do not trust the United States. So, Mr. President, what is the current state of Iran-Saudi uh, relations? Are Tehran and Riyadh ready to address the issues on Yemen, uh, Lebanon, Iraq, and Palestine, or are you only focused on bilateral relations? I believe that your question is in fact composed of different uh, questions and I will provide you different uh, answers. My first answer uh, regarding the our connect relations with Saudi Arabia is that we have some ongoing discussions with Saudi Arabia hosted in are brotherly and friendly country of Iraq. These discussions have been held for five rounds and they will be continued. We believe that the regional issues, if not interfered by, other, by external forces, will be, will be uh, uh, settled. We have attached great importance to regional dialogue and we believe that they can be fruitful and our regional officials have the capacity to resolve the issues without this uh, interference of all the foreign uh, forces. But regarding Yemen, so the Yemen, uh, Yemeni issues should be settled by Yemenis themselves. We believe that inter-Yemeni negotiations is the solution. No one should interfere in this country, but the Yemeni themselves, who are very capable people, should resolve their own issues and problems. It is for seven years that they are doing uh, unfair actions against this country and they are oppressing them. The Yemeni people can decide themselves. With empty stomachs, they are resisting against them for seven years. Settling the Yemeni issue, the solution for the Yemeni issue is to deliver the issue to the Yemeni themselves, who are brave people, who are knowledgeable people, so they can find a solution for their own problems. I believe that it is very necessary to remove the embargo against this country as soon as possible, to establish lasting ceasefire, and to promote Yemeni, Yemeni negotiations. Regarding the Iraqi issue, the Iraqi people, I have told all the times the Supreme Leader, late Imam Khomeini, have announced all the times that we are thinking of a strong Iraq. We all the time wish a strong Iraqi people and a strong Iraqi nation. The Iraqi nation should decide themselves regarding the government which is going to establish in this a country. We would be very happy to have a strong government established in Iraq to run the country and to avoid the uh, extra regional forces from interfering in their internal affairs. They should not allow the Americans in Iraq to be uh, present anymore. We need a strong uh, Iraq which is trusted by its own people. So there are some countries, European countries, other countries who have been contacting us. We have told them that when it comes to Iraq, the Iraqis should decide themselves. We believe that Iraqis should decide for themselves. And this is uh, true again for Syria as well. So what are the Americans uh, going to do in Syria? Why are they taking the oil of this country away? 
the Syrian people who have been subject of great oppression. So based on what legal frameworks, and based on what principles they are taking the oil of this country. And they are plundering their resources. This is the Syrian people who should utilize their resources. So what does it mean? that we have the presence of the U.S. force in this country. We believe that nations should decide for themselves. So this is the uh, source of the problem. The United States intends to control the world and to make some concessions by their dominance from the resources of other countries and we believe that this is an arrogant perspective and based on oppression this cannot be lasting and sustainable today nations are uh, very uh, informed they are very knowledgeable so we believe that today nations do not uh, resist such pressures that a country from the uh, other end of the world to enter the, into their own country and to plunder their resources. This is not acceptable. Mr. President, moving on to the East, how would you describe Iran-Russia-China relations? How much more can this relationship grow and has the U.S pressure for this relationship not to prosper. In our foreign policy, we believe in balance. We would like to promote our relations with all countries, especially with independent countries, with China, we, we have set up a 25-year-old uh, program. We are going to implement it. And, and we do not uh, link our relations with China with relations with other countries. We have started our relations with China just from the victory of the Islamic Revolution. We'll continue it. And this is true about Russia as well. Our relations with uh, uh, Russia has started previously. We are promoting them. And with our neighboring countries, we intend to promote our bilateral relations. And in fact, we have a balanced perspective towards other countries. By this, I mean that. We try to promote our uh, bilateral relations with East, with our neighboring countries, and with those countries who are against the arrogant and dominant looking perspectives of the uh, West. So we can promote bilateral relations with all these countries. At the beginning of this administration, I announced that I extend my hand to shake hands with all our neighboring countries and we are following the same policy. We do not uh, oppress against other, uh, other, uh, other countries, neither we accept any other countries to oppress us. And this is the policy of the Islamic Republic of Iran. And finally, uh, Mr. President, your country emerged from an ancient civilization rich in history, culture, and traditions. And it has been more than four decades since the Islamic Revolution. But looking ahead, where and how do you see uh, your country's future? And what could be improved and done differently moving ahead? The Islamic Republic of Iran believes that there is a very bright future for us. The base of this perspective is that we believe whatever defines the perspective and policies of the Islamic Republic of Iran is originated from the natural demands of human beings. The Islamic Republic of Iran is to administer justice and it believes that justice should be realized in Iran and at the same time, his bilateral relations with other countries should be just and fair. 
we request and we intend justice for all, for all people of all countries. We, we believe in just and fair relations. We are against the arrogant spirit of the United States and the policies is in line with this perspective. And we believe that bilateral relations should be just and fair. We believe that those who determine the future is based on the determination, corruption, and some uh, political uh, relations. But the fact that the lasting solution is the right, justice will remain forever. The right things will will, will remain for them. Today, in the Islamic countries, if you look at the Islamic people, and if you look at Muslims, all of them want to live in an Islamic way. So, they like to live like Muslims. What does it mean? It means that they like the Islamic uh, rules, regulations. Normalizing of relations of Israel with some countries, this can can it create security for this regime? In hakhahi ve edalat khahi mardom musalman ro dar dunya. So the, does it uh, weaken the the yani right yani demanding yani and yani justice yani demanding yani of the Muslim people? If you go yani among yani the yani Muslims yani and ask them. If the Zionist regime and the feelings of people for these people and the atrocities that this regime has done against the Palestinian people and the people of the region. So if you ask the perspective of the Muslims, you will see what we'll say. So let's go to uh, other nations those uh, liberal uh, freedom-seeking people, ask their ideas. What do they think about Israel and Palestine? So they signed the Camp David Agreement. They signed the Sharm Agreement. They signed the Oslo Agreement. Were they uh, successful in blocking the right demanding and demanding of rights of the Palestinian people. So, Gaza is uh, under siege. So, the Gaza people stood against the Zionist forces by using stones. So, oppressing the people of Gaza and oppressing the people of uh, Palestine did prevent those people from uh, refraining from resistance or it changed their stones into missiles. So I want to reply to your question. Your question is that, how do you see the future? We believe that future cannot define, defined by injustice and oppression. So the mass of human beings, whether Muslims or non-Muslims, so uh, they want the administration of justice and this uh, administration of justice will define future. Maybe the uh, dominant forces, by making use of their influence, will stand against this demand and try to immediately to, to create lack of knowledge among the people. Of course, they, are, they claim that they are promoting knowledge and information in the for uh, in the world, but in fact, they are misinforming the people. But they should know that the spirit of demanding rise and the spirit of demanding uh, freedom cannot be uh, uh, stopped. Today, the Islamic Republic of Iran intends to promote just-based relations. In one sentence, we believe that there is a very bright future, and we believe that. The right will have the right. President of the Islamic Republic of Iran, Sayyid Ibrahim Raisi, thank you for talking to Al Jazeera. Uh, I would like to thank you and Al Jazeera as well.